Okay, we are learning about Pythagoras' theorem, and I am aware most of you have no idea about what this is. Some of you have heard about it before. So, what do you know about this one? Uh, you have to find one side of the triangle, the unknown side. Yes, you can find an unknown, unknown side in a triangle. Can we use it in any triangle? Or is it only certain triangles we can use Pythagoras' theorem? Say it out loud. Is it right hand? Right angle triangle. What is a right angle triangle? It has a 90 degree corner. Yep, it's corner or 90 degree angle, okay. yes. And then all the others are called wrong triangles? No, they're not. So just the right, right angle triangles are the ones that have a... 90 degree angle. So the first thing we need to check in a question is do we have a right angle triangle? If we do, we can find a missing length in a right angle triangle. Now, to find one missing length, we must have two other lengths given to us. So if I have the length of this side and length of this side, I can find the unknown side. So Pythagoras' theorem is a relationship between the sides of a right angled triangle. It has been used and proved by a number of mathematicians. However, it's named after a Greek mathematician called Pythagoras. So that's why we always write it with an uppercase. It's, it's after the name of a mathematician, so it has to be a, an uppercase P. So Pythagoras' theorem, he's been given the credit of actually writing the first formal proof, but we're not actually sure who first wrote the proof, but we've given him the credit, so I'm happy with that. Now, what happens in a right angle triangle is, we will do visual proofs later on when we have time. Today we're just going to understand the mathematical way of writing Pythagoras' theorem. So what Pythagoras found and a lot of other mathematicians found was that there was a relationship between the lengths of a triangle, if it's a right angle triangle. And the relationship that he found was, if this length is labeled as C, what is special about this side of the right angle triangle? Is there a special name assigned to this side? Hypotenuse, yes. So this side is always called the hypotenuse. And how do you find the hypotenuse? It's the side opposite to the right angle. So in a right angle triangle, once you know, okay, I have a right angle triangle, I have an unknown side. Shush. I can use Pythagoras' theorem. The first thing you look at is which side is the hypotenuse. Do you know there's a special feature that hypotenuse has? Any ideas? Can you look and tell me which one do you think is along this side of this triangle? Hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is the longest side in a right angle triangle. So do we all know what a right angle triangle is? The yes. angle that triangle that has a 90 degree angle. Which side is the hypotenuse? One. Opposite to the right angle. Right angle. And uh, is that the shortest side of the triangle or the longest side? Awesome. Then, Pythagoras and a lot of... Put the scissors down, please. Thank you. Uh, Pythagoras found that the length of this side squared... So what's the length of this side? Let's say if it's C. If you square it, it actually equals... Let's say this is side A and this is side B. doesn't matter which one you label as A and which one you label as B. But what matters is hypotenuse is always labeled as C. So C squared is equal to A squared plus... B squared, where A is the side, uh, this side length and B is the length of this side. So how would we say it in words? Sum of squares of the two opposite sides is equal to the square of hypotenuse. So I'm going to say it again the right way. Square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of squares of the other two sides. Do we understand it? Now, again, we don't understand it, it's too complicated, it's in words. Let's have a look here. So if this is 3, and this is 4, let's make this 4 disappear as longer, and this is 3 units, could be anything, centimeters or th meters, but it has to be the same. If this is 3 and this is 4, then according to Pythagoras, let's square the 3. What's 3 squared? 9. Nine. And let's square this side. What's 4 squared? 16. So 3 squared plus 4 squared must equal to this length squared. So what would this length squared be equal to? 25. 25. So if C squared is 25, what would C be equal to? What number squared is 25? 5. 5. So can I say C is 5 then? 
Yes. yes. And you can check it. And that works in any right angled triangle. The hypotenuse square is equal to this side squared plus that side squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared will always be equal to 5 squared. So if we have a right angle triangle with a side length 3, a side length 4, then hypotenuse must be 5. And can we see that it's actually the longest as we talked about? So that's the mathematical way of representing Pythagoras. Now, how can we ask you a question regarding this? So for example, check if the following is a right angle triangle. So we don't know whether it's a right angle triangle or not, we just need to check it. So I'm going to give you some random numbers. Let's say this is 6 centimeters, this is 4 centimeters, and this is 8 centimeters. Okay, you have to check. So, first of all we need to identify our hypotenuse. Which is the longest side? So that means this needs to be our hypotenuse. Okay, we don't know where the 90 degree angle is, so we can't say one opposite to the 90 degree. But this is the longest, so this must be the hypotenuse, if it's a 90 degree angle, right? Yes. Then, can we find C squared? What's H squared? 64. 64. Now, we need to check whether it equals to this squared plus that squared, right? So what's A squared? 6 squared, which is 36. What's B squared? 4 squared, which is 16. Let's add it. 52. So does this equal our C squared? No. So is this a right angle triangle? No. Because in every right angle triangle, the Pythagoras' theorem must be true. Hypotenuse squared should be equal to the sum of squares of the other two sides. On simple words, C squared must equal A squared plus B squared. So how will you write it? You'll say A squared plus B squared is not equal to C squared. Therefore, it is not a right angled triangle. Does that make sense? That's 6 eight understanding. So you'll be asked to check whether the three sides belong to a right angle triangle or not. If it's equal, yes it is. If it's not equal, no it isn't. Questions? Why don't we just use like a ruler to figure out how long? Because the diagrams given in a test or in the book or exam are not drawn to scale. So for example, I've not measured this and written three, I've not measured this and written four, I haven't measured this angle. So the diagrams drawn on the test exam are not drawn to scale. So you can't just measure it. You have to prove it mathematically that yes, it is a right angle triangle or no, it isn't. Yes? What if A squared plus B squared is not a perfect square? And that's fine. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. Pythagoras didn't mention that. All he said was whatever A squared plus B squared is, it must be equal to C squared. And we'll come to that in the next exercise. There will be thirds because we've done thirds now. Any other questions? Okay, copy.